Today is my last working day at Balance. I filmed this video to record my current situation, my feeling, and hopefully this video can be helpful to you. So in this video, I'm going to um, break down into three categories. The first is about my working experience and what makes me to leave Balance for some of the stories. And second is, there is actually another very famous video talking about um, her leave of Binance, of TikTok basically. And in the second part, I would like to comment on some of the opinions in her video. And last but not least, my opinions uh, about my leave and what are the reasons. So before we get started, I have to say that Binance is a very great place to learn new technology. Uh, when I joined Binance, uh, actually I know nothing, but after one and a half years training, I can see I've grown so much and the people here are great. I would say Binance has one of the best software engineers in the world and this is actually totally reasonable why they can build so many famous and popular worldwide products. So I'm very grateful for um, all of my managers and directors here. I think they are pretty good. Unfortunately, um, I still decided to leave eventually. Okay, so let's get started. The first is about the working experience and what makes me leave Binance. Um, previously, I made a video talking about uh, my working experience at Binance and hopefully uh, you can check this out. So I won't illustrate the repetitive contents here anymore. Uh, I have to say the game changing story or time is when after working one year, um, there's actually an annual um, performance review. So in that review, my grade wasn't very good. However, the point is I think I've been working so hard and I believe uh, my achievements and my contribution to our product is very obvious and everybody can notice that. And even in the comments, uh, in the review comments, um, most of the people are very positive to my progress, to my contribution. However, the grade wasn't good. Uh, at that time, I was quite sad, to be honest. I was thinking, is it worth it like, for me to contribute so much of my time into my work? Since sometimes in the workday, I would work until maybe 9 or 10 p.m. And sometimes in the weekends, I would still work. I just wanted to try my best to make our product better. However, eventually, it is not the case um, that happened. And it's actually exactly the time after that, my passion to my work just decreased so much and I just don't know the meaning of my working there even though I've done so much of the work. Of course I try to talk to my managers, to my uh, directors uh, about my progress but I believe their opinion or their conclusion wasn't very clear and this somehow confused me. And very soon after working one year I made another video about my one year working experience at Biden's. So in that video, I made some objective opinions about my working status. So after around one year and maybe a few more months, uh, if I divide my living expectation into 10 points, so 10 means I would go immediately, I would leave this company immediately uh, without any hesitation, even though I got no offer. And nine means I would try to actively find a job, even though the, the new jobs offer it's not that competitive with my current one, I would still leave. And eight means I would actively find for jobs and I would only take the job um, if the offer is much better than my current one. And seven means I would not actively find jobs and I would also accept offers that are slightly better than my current one. And six means I won't actively find jobs and I would only accept for the offers that are much better than my current one. So. If I talk about the situation, about my status and then now, it would be around six points. So I want actively fighting for jobs, but I would like to consider some other opportunities. Very soon, another very great company, a public company, reached out to me and um, said whether I can have an interview. So I interviewed them and later they gave me a much better offer than the current one. So yeah, I think, yeah. It's time to leave. So after telling my personal story, I think the second part, very importantly, I would like to comment to another very famous YouTuber on Chloe's um, video on why she loved TikTok. I have to say there are actually a lot of difference between she and me. So I would like to just give 
an uh, overview about our different situations, so it's better for you to understand. So for Chloe, she lives in San Francisco, uh, United States. So her office is very different from mine. I'm working in Singapore. So first, it's different country. The culture is different. And also, she, her time zone and my time zone is totally different. Since in Singapore, the time zone is exactly the same as the China's time zone. So a lot of issues she talked in her video is very different from mine. And also, she's a PM and I'm a software engineer, so our job scope is also a bit different. So in her video, she mentioned four points. The first is uh, career growth. In this opinion, actually, I'm totally agree with her. I think my career growth is very ambiguous. I don't know what is the future of my career. Even though I currently am just a junior software engineer, I think my path to senior engineer is very unclear. I think the point is sometimes not only you don't understand um, what is the path or what is the standard to be a senior software engineer, sometimes even your manager doesn't know it. Of course, they will have a full list, okay? They will have a full list about uh, each uh, standard about the senior or junior software engineer, but sometimes I think that's just too ambiguous. Like, how can you measure it? Uh, this just cannot be measured. And sometimes when they point out some issues about me, but it's actually not my issue. Um, I've done it well. Actually, I'm doing well in what you're saying. So that's a little bit unfortunate. And second about culture. For culture, I have a lot of things to talk about. Um, overall, I would say Biden's culture is pretty good. However, in her uh, video, she actually mentioned some um, points that we have to discuss a bit. So first, it's about working over time. You know, since she's in San Francisco time zone, it's very different from Beijing's time. And therefore, of course, sometimes you have to have meetings with your colleagues in China, and therefore you have to work at midnight. So that is no excuse. But in Singapore, it's actually totally different. So most of the um, employees here, especially software engineers, we just don't work over time. However, for some groups, they do need to work over time, but that's not a very frequent case. And recently, Binance has canceled its um, big or small sh uh, shifting week. I don't know how to translate English, but it's more like in your big week, you need to work six days per week, and in a small week, you need to work uh, five days per week, just normally. And it's like shifting one by one. And recently, uh, they just canceled it. So all the time, just five days per week. However, in China, the same, of course, um, they would work a bit over time, maybe 9 to 10 p.m. Uh, in the worst case. But in Singapore, we just don't work over time. So that's a good thing to know. And second, I would like to mention is her idea doesn't you know, get respected by her uh, colleagues very well. Um, I would say this is actually happening on me as well. Uh, and I would say it's actually hurting my feeling very well. Um, but I have to say it objectively, since um, a balance the product's uh, requirements are more like from top to down. So PM will have um, requirements to you, and above PM, maybe um, the director or manager, they would tell them, okay, what we want to achieve um, in this milestone, in this month, for example. However, the thing is, for me as an engineer, uh, we usually will have some new ideas, but since our requirements are already there, our ideas may not be, you know, stuck to the plan or just get started. So it's a bit sad for those who are very creative. Previously, I also made a video about things you must know for uh, managers. So in that video, actually, I mentioned maybe, maybe to just change your warden or change your attitude a bit will help a lot. And third point she mentioned about diversity. Uh, I would say in Singapore, it's even more diverse. We have employees from uh, different countries all over the world in our team. It's actually very diversified. And therefore, there are a lot of culture shock or um, different behavior or wording translation issue happen on her and make she a bit unhappy. And I would say, I, yeah, I agree. This is true. However, for me, since I'm a native Chinese speaker, I was born and um, grew up in China, so I can speak Chinese very well, and I know what a Chinese thinking. And in the meantime, uh, my mindset I also combine with Western culture, 
Uh, therefore, for me, I'm quite comfortable here. So I would like to make an uh, example here. Some of my colleagues, they're not native Chinese speakers, and when they talk to the Chinese team, they would wait a long time. However, for me, when I speak um, Chinese to them, they respond very fast. But this is actually common sense because not all of the Chinese they can speak English very well. Therefore, if they see your English messages, they have to translate it. And sometimes the translation might be wrong. They have to ask other people about what you mean. So it's quite troublesome. And therefore, uh, after some time, our team, whenever we need to talk to uh, our mainland China team, we would, they would just ask the native Chinese speaker to talk to them. So I have to say this is some just diversity issue. Uh, but I believe it is totally solvable. And last but not least is the health. Um, for me, I don't have any health concern, um, largely because of our time zone issue. In the early time when I finish my task early, uh, usually I can you know, leave around 45 p.m. in the best cases, in the best cases, okay? But usually I would just leave around six, sometimes I may leave around seven to eight, uh, during my normal working hours. So these are all acceptable. Uh, so I personally don't have to, you know, get up in the midnight and solve the uncle issues or just stay up very late to 10 p.m. Even though sometimes there is, but just one or two times, um, that's totally acceptable. So for me, I don't have any health concerns. I believe from Chloe's perspective, from my feeling, I think she needs to leave, to be honest, since her circumstances are very different from mine. Um, but for me, I was not that eagerly wish to leave. And this comes to my third point, um, my opinions about the causing points that why I left Binance. So of course, the first is about the compensation. When I first joined Binance, my compensation at that time was very good. And in my uh, first video, my work experience of Binance, I also mentioned that um, Binance has a very competitive conversation. However, the point is over time, uh, your conversation doesn't increase that much compared to your ability, compared to the market. So my experience or my ability, I have to say, has been increased a lot during these one half years since after graduation. And also the market right now is also increasing a lot for the software engineer's salary. And therefore, when another very competitive um, offer comes, of course, I'll leave. And second point is, I think since Biden's is um, growing so dramatically, um, their employees are also increasing very much. The management um, may not keep the pace to the growing of the employees. And therefore, they might also cause some issues. For example, they may not consider your circumstances that well, or it, they may not just give your future path very clear. And also sometimes the hiring process might also have some issues. Like maybe you hire for a position A, they ask you questions for position B. So these are the issues I believe the management team needs to solve. And Last but not least, I would like to mention one point, which is I just feel I'm not trusted by um, some of the employees. So even though I've been working here one half year, I've never ever interviewed one person. Sometimes my managers, they ask me to interview, but from other departments or other try they just refuse me to review because of my lack of experience. Okay, so first I would like to say uh, I'm not that lack of experience. I think the mindset of not getting updated that I've been working so long and I've contributed so much. And second point is some of our employees, they're just so busy. They were like, besides interviewing, they also have a lot of other things to do. So they're quite busy. And I have some time to help them to reduce their burden to help them interview, but I just don't have the chances. So it's more like on the one party is quite busy, while on the second party is okay. So I believe the distribution of tasks is a bit, I would say, unfair or um, lack of consideration. I would say if you can manage like to make the employees cooperate better to um, to distribute the works uh, more evenly, that can boost the speed very much. So. 
when a new offer comes, they're showing they're honest, they're showing their willingness to let me join the company and they give me very good conversation so far and also they give me a better position. I would say, yeah, I would like to take this ride. So last but not least, if you are a new grad, I would highly recommend you to try out in Binance for one, two or three years. This will make your experience totally different and make you learn a lot of new things. If you join other big tech companies, maybe, maybe you won't have this kind of experience. I would say in the early age, maybe the more important things is your ability, your passion about new stuff. And I believe Binance is the place that satisfies all these categories to give you all the best education to make you uh, to learn a lot of new things. Today, when I compare myself with other uh, my friends who graduated at the same time but in different um, big tech companies, I can see our technical knowledge are not on the same level. Therefore, if you give me choices, for example, Google, Facebook, uh, maybe other big tech companies in Singapore when I graduated, I would still choose Binance, to be honest. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, this video uh, gives you some insight about why I loved by then and stay tuned since I'm going to release my next uh, employer in my next video peace